Hello and welcome to Tim's BMW Repairs and Information. And this is the first in the cooling system series and this is about the viscous coupled fan. And this fan seems to cause a lot of problems. There's a lot of stuff available that tells you how to test it with rolled up newspapers and so on. And I've seen so many of these change for no reason at all. The fan gets changed and then you have the same problem. So what we'll do is we'll have a close look at one, how it works. Here's one on my E38. It's a plastic fan assembly, which is bolted to an aluminium assembly, thinned because it actually produces a lot of heat, by metallic strip on the front, which measures air temperature. On the back, there's a hollow bolt with a left-handed thread, which bolts to the water pump pulley. And it's driven by the engine by the fan belt. Here's the insides one on the left front cover, then rotor, then back cover. And you can see they've got these machined fins to the rotor and the back cover. And these intermesh. And so here I am pulling the pulley, uh, the drive mechanism away from the front cover. And you can see these peaks and troughs. And they don't mate. When they the fan is assembled, there's a, a small gap between the rotor which I'm putting in here and the fan mechanism and you see these peaks and troughs are separated by a very small gap and that is flooded with viscous oil when the fan is required to provide cooling and it provides a shear force to the fan uh, so it's not like locking a clutch for instance the two will slip in respect to each other and the viscosity of the oil limits the speed of the fan in our case that's 2500 rpm and when cooling is no longer required a valve is closed and all the viscous fluid returns back to the reservoir so here we go 96.2 watch the bimetallic strip that pops open valve pops open and the viscous fluid floods in between the peaks and the troughs and that provides the shear force to drive the fan and it can transmit quite a lot of energy and the energy lost in the fan is dissipated by the fins on the housing, which is why it's got so many of them. The viscous fluid continually circulates and it returns to the reservoir via these spiral uh, cuts into the inner face of the fan assembly. So it uses centrifugal force to bung it outwards and into the fins and it uses these oilways to return it back to the reservoir. When the air temperature reaches 60 degrees C, the bimetallic strip clicks to the closed position and all the viscous fluid returns back to the reservoir. And when it's all returned to the reservoir, the fan slows down. You can see one doing it here. Quite obvious from moving a heck of a lot of air. You can see it slow down, you can hear it slow down. And once the viscous fluid is all returned, it import, imparts such a small force to the fan, you can stop it with your hand. Of course, when it's locked, it produces a lot of airflow. So here we go, returning back to idle with all the fluid returned to the reservoir. So the fan is either engaged or disengaged. It doesn't provide a little bit of force. It provides all the force it can when it's engaged and when it's disengaged it produces just a, a very slow rotation. Air temperature operates the bimetallic valve, not coolant temperature, not radiator temperature, but the air temperature going past it. When engaged the fan speed is always slower than the pulley speed, it needs that to return the fluid back to the reservoir. And the viscous fan used in the BMW has a maximum rotation speed of 2500 rpm and the drive is provided by the shear force of a viscous oil which limits its rotational speed. Engages at 96.2, disengages at 60 degrees C air temperature and when stopped the oil slowly returns down the spiral uh, passages and goes back in between the peaks and the troughs and there you are there's an engine uh, a fan that's been stopped for a while all the fluids return back 
between the peaks and the trough and that means that you can actually test it when it's cold you can try and rotate it and you'll feel this oil damping as you try and rotate it it's quite obvious and that shows that it's got good oil damping and the viscous fluid is present here's an example of one with no viscous fluid and if you spin it it just keeps on rotating so on a cold engine first time you try and turn it if it does that you've got trouble interestingly enough if you turn the fan the opposite way to which it usually goes that road returns the fluid to the reservoir and you'll find that it will keep spinning for much longer the more time you spin it and that's good indication that the oil can actually be moved around the system when the engine's cold and you first start it up and the fluid is between the peaks and troughs it moves a lot of air and it's quite obvious that it's locked okay so let's have a look at the operation with the rest of the cooling system and we can see coolant uh, going through the main coolant radiator and we're measuring the temperature here at the engine temperature sensor and when it reaches about 105 C that means the, temp uh, the temperature of the radiator is about the same and the air is probably a little bit less then the viscous couple fan will lock up and it will very rapidly reduce the temperature of the coolant within the radiator until the air temperature reaches about 60 degrees C and then it will go back out of lock again and it will do this continually if you're idling it will lock up the fan it'll cool the radiator and then it will stop again the actual engine temperature is controlled by the thermostat opening and closing by small amounts to keep maintain the correct engine temperature Okay, so the things that go wrong, the first is obvious, if you lose the viscous oil, then it's got not going to lock up at all, and you can check that by spinning the fan when, when the engine's cold. If it whizzes round like that, you can be absolutely sure you've lost your viscous fluid and it's not going to work. And from inside the car, what you actually see happen is that when you're idling, the temperature gauge starts creeping up from the centre, and at some point, around about 135C and the lower hose temperature about 99C the auxiliary fan will go into operation and that saves the day and you can obviously check by uh, spinning the fan when the engine's cold and if it spins that's obvious what it is um, it will only overheat when it's idling when the car's moving there's enough sufficient airflow to keep the main coolant radiator cool we have a very similar situation where the airflow is restricted and I had this on my E31 uh, when I was changing the condenser and it was pretty obvious that's the main coolant radiator and the amount of junk between the condenser and the main radiator just stopped the airflow over the viscous couple fan so it couldn't actually sense the air temperature and I've had a friend have exactly the same problem and the viscous couple fan was changed and it made no difference so I'll do the same again the temperature as seen on the gauge will reach about three quarter the, the auxiliary fan will fire up again it only overheats when idling and when you're on the move it's usually fine unless you give the car a lot of power but the main difference is the fan shows resistance when the engine is cold so when you do the check with a cold engine if you can't spin the fan freely then you can pretty much say the viscous coupled fan is probably okay and there's something else causing the problem and then you go ahead and check for the airflow through all the radiators and of course we've got four of them on the E31 and the E38 and so on if the thermostat fails to open then neither fan does anything because there's no temperature being measured there's no coolant running through the radiators there's a small amount going through the expansion tank and back to the pump but what's happening here is the temperature will keep, just keep on increasing the pressure within the system will keep on increasing until we reach about two bar and then it will blow the excess pressure through the expansion tank cap and then you'll start boiling the engine and that's pretty serious you don't want to get to this point at all time to stop the engine and fix it 
And the last failure mode is if the fan bearing seizes, then of course there it isn't a viscous coupling anymore, it's just joined directly to the water pump pulley. It makes an awful roaring roaring noise all the time. It's not limited to 2500 RPM anymore. It goes it can go up to the same as the engine speed. And at that point the fan blades do tend to come off and chop through the hoses and pop through the bonnet. But it's immediately obvious it makes an awful roaring noise. Okay, so we'll go back again through the failure modes one at a time and how to differentiate between all of them. If you lose the viscous fluid, fan uh, spins freely when cold, car overheats at idle but not one when it's running. Airflow restricted, the same again, but the fan has resistance when it's cold. And so you can tell the difference between those. Thermostats failed, car overheats at all speeds, um, very dangerous. And the final one, if the bearing seizes, then the fan cannot be turned on a stopped engine and it may shed the blades. And there's the four failure modes and how to find them. Last bit, how to remove the viscous couple fan without the special tool. And this is the method I've been using all the time uh, with my BMWs. I use a big spanner, very big spanner in this case, 32 mil, or in this case, it's uh, three quarter British Standard Whitworth. So 1940s spanner, but the head's very wide. And because it's so wide, I have to remove a couple of the water pump pulley bolts. And that's what I use the 10 mil spanner for. Small hammer, you don't need one any bigger than that. You only do damage to other things. And a pair of long nose pliers to get the water pump pulley bolts out with, because they're a bit fiddly when the viscous fan's still fitted. And the next picture shows the two bolts removed, but I've removed the viscous fan at this point, And that just shows you how I get the spanner in there. So it's just a case of removing those two bolts putting the spanner in position and then giving it a few taps. Oh yeah, protect the innards of the car with a big uh, towel like this. And so if you hit it, the spanner too hard or if it lets go first time, then you're not gonna chop the top hose off or hit any of the cables. So it really just needs a light dink on it like that. And that's enough to loosen it off and the fan will come off very easily. Well, that's about it. Thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.